In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the breakdown of the major energy sources. We have starch, which is the complex form of sugar. Casein, specifically, is the protein found in milk. And lipids, for fat. With our starch hydrolysis, we're going to be using a starch plate. Casein, we're going to be having a milk agar. And lipid, we're going to be using a tributyrin plate. So with that, let's get started. In starch hydrolysis, we're trying to break down starch into a smaller molecule such as glucose. Starch is too big of a molecule to enter the bacteria cells, so they have to break it down into something smaller. And they use that with the enzyme amylase mixed with water in order to break the bonds in starch to individual molecules of glucose. So the first thing that we're going to do with this is label our plate. This one's very important for this one because you're going to be comparing two different bacteria and label which bacteria is which. Because once you add the bacteria, you incubate and you pull it back out, you're not going to know which one's which. So labeling is very important in this one. So after you've incubated and you have your bacterial growth, you're going to add iodine. And the iodine's not going to color the bacteria, just the plate itself. And you're going to sw swirl that around and you are going to observe either a clearing or not a clearing around the bacteria. And what this clearing means is that there's no more starch around that bacteria. And the reason why there's no more starch around the bacteria is because it has converted all that starch into glucose. It has broken down the starch in the immediate area, converted it to glucose, and has taken it in in order for it to grow. This one over here without the clearing means that it does not have the enzyme amylase, which means it is unable to break down starch into glucose. A clearing around the bacteria would indicate a positive result such as over here while a negative result would result in no clearing over here. Unlike the other tests that we have run, these next couple of tests are just basically saying that we know that we're going to have growth but what is it about this growth that we care about? So just because we have growth doesn't mean a positive or negative result. It's the clearing around the bacteria that dictates a positive or negative result. So in this test, it is the clearing in the presence of iodine that tells us whether we have a positive or negative result. It's this clearing that tells us that the starch around the bacteria has been broken down into glucose and has already been, a, been used by the bacteria. With casein hydrolysis, we're looking for the presence of casease, which is an enzyme that breaks down casein. Casein is the protein that we find in milk, and that gives it, a, gives it that white color. When casease and water work together in the presence of a protein, they'll be able to break the amino acid bonds. So as you guys know, proteins are an accumulation of amino acids, and each amino acid, as they're bound in order to make this protein, each amino acid is bound to each other. In casease, in the presence of water, We'll be able to break down our protein. Now I wrote down the protein here with a dash amino acid meaning that our amino acids have individual bonds to each other and an accumulation of that makes up a protein. So casease what it does is it breaks up these individual amino acid bonds in order to give us say our protein minus one amino acid. Now in the grand scheme of things, this happens on a much larger scale, but just to give you the basics of it, casease is able to break those amino acid bonds, giving us a single amino acid, which allows the bacteria to have an amino acid resource. So the first thing we're going to do is label our plates, make sure we know which bacteria is which before we place them on. Then after we incubate, we're going to be looking for a clearing. Unlike the starch hydrolysis, we don't need to add iodine for this one. So in the top one, I try to do my best to demonstrate that there is a clearing there. The way that it came out for me when I did this, did this lab was this bacteria, which does have a clearing, is also a little bit darker than this one down here that's a negative result and does not have a clearing. So this would be our positive result. This would be our negative result. So we're just looking for that clearing or a little haziness around the edge, something that gives it a little extra pop than just the growth of the bacteria itself. Lastly, we're going to be looking at our lipid hydrolysis. So just like in the casein, we're going to label our plates, add the bacteria, and look for a clearing. As you can see, the one up here has a clearing. That's indicative of a positive result. 
while the one down here does not, and that's a negative result. A positive result, meaning that our lipid has been broken down with the enzyme lipase into glycerol and fatty acids. Now in the case of glycerol, it can be converted into a molecule that can go through glycolysis in order to make pyruvate, while the three fatty acids can go through beta oxidation and directly react with coenzyme A in order to become acetyl-CoA. So as you saw with all the plates, what we're looking for is a clearing. And starch is the only one that's different. We have to add iodine because the clearing in the starch plate is not obvious. So we use iodine in order to help us detect the clearing in that plate. All of these things from sugars to proteins to fats are all sources of energy. As you know with aerobic respiration we can make glucose into pyruvate. We can either use that pyruvate to convert it back to lactic acid or ethanol. Or we could take that pyruvate, move it all the way down to the electron transport chain and convert it to a mass amount of energy there. Casein, amino acids, and proteins are a very, very important source of energy in case things such as sugars and fats are not available. And then finally we have lipids. And with lipids, they can eventually become glycerol and fatty acids. The glycerols can be used as a substrate to eventually become pyruvate, while the fatty acids can become acetyl-CoA with a mixture of the proper beta oxidation and coenzyme A. So if you guys have any questions about this, please feel free to shoot me an email and I look forward to hearing from you guys.